Hi Precalculus, here we are looking at the ambiguous case for the law of signs and we are in section 5-7. Something we didn't see in the last section when we were talking about the law of signs is that there can be times when the law of signs doesn't actually work the way we would like it to or doesn't yield us a, um, a positive answer. It doesn't yield us a one concise answer. And so what that's known as the ambiguous case, we know that different things can happen depending on the orientation or the type of triangle that we're working with. So we remember that the law of signs has to do with the ratio of the sine of an angle um, over the side opposite that angle or vice versa and that within a triangle within all three angles of a triangle so here's what we're looking at the ambiguous case that we're going to talk about first of all we need to consider what happens when the, one of the angles or the angle that we're concerned about or the angle that we're given information about is less than 90 degrees so when we have that I want you to think about this triangle right here first of all this triangle let's understand the information given here this triangle is a a right triangle so we know that the sine of angle a is opposite over hypotenuse the sine of angle a will be the opposite over hypotenuse so if I think about this length here this length here this part here has to be B times the sine of a because we know the sine of a is this length over B the sine of A is this length over here over B. Therefore, when I multiply B times that, I get this length here. If you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Take a moment, pause, make sure it makes sense. So it makes sense that right now we are comparing length A, the actual length of the side across from angle A with B sine A, this perpendicular line here. So what we know is that if A is less than B times sine of A, if A is less than that, if the actual side across from it is less than this perpendicular line, then what we know is that there's no solution. This triangle does not exist because in a way we can think of it swinging, this side swinging on a squeaky hinge, looking for the opportunity to meet the other side. So that's one situation. The next situation is if A, if the side opposite angle A actually equals B sine A. If that's the situation, then we are actually dealing with a right triangle and there's exactly one solution. All right. If we come over here, if A is greater than B sine A, look at what can happen. We can have the length of A being on this side or being on this side. And what we end up do it, doing in this situation is having two very different values for um, C and angle C. Can you guys see that? So if A is here and then A or A is on this side, we'd have two different values for C and then the angle for C would also be different. But notice that B wouldn't change. So what this is showing us, this ambiguous case is saying, hey, you might have an angle, you might have the side opposite it, but the side angle beside B and the relationship to that other side A times uh, with side B is going to determine if you're really going to get two answers for the rest of for the rest of the situation for the rest of the sign um, the values of C makes sense a little bit I hope so I hope so so it kind of shows a faultiness in the law of signs next uh, section we're going to talk about the law of cosines which is going to give us a little bit more strength when we're dealing with situations like this all right and so the next thing is so remember before we were dealing with um, all situations where a was less than b here a being greater than B, if A is greater than that other side that we have, if the side A is greater than the other side that we have, greater than or equal to rather, then there is going to be exactly one solution. Does that make sense? I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. So these are the situations that we're dealing with. And let's go ahead and look at case number two. So case number two has the A angle, a particular angle that we're focusing on being greater than 90 degrees. I guess greater than or equal to is really here. And if it's greater than or equal to 90 degrees, then we know that the side opposite that side must be the longest side. Must be the longest side. And so what this is saying, if it is not the longest side, then there's no solution. And that makes a certain sort of sense because I can't have the largest angle, the side opposite the largest angle, not being the longest side. If B is longer than it or even equal to it, 
that doesn't make sense. All right. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. And finally, as long as this large angle A does have the longest side opposite it, then there's only going to be one solution. So we were dealing in last section, we were dealing with situations where it always had one solution. Not that it was contrived per se, but just making sure that you understood the power of the law of signs. But now we need to see somewhat of the weakness of the law of signs or how we need to determine um, what's going on or being careful when we use the law of signs. That's what I should say. All right. Determine the number of possible solutions for each triangle. So as I look at this triangle, we're given information about one angle. That angle is 30 degrees and we're given information about the side opposite it and we've got um, one side B. And so this looks like we're dealing with the first case where the angle that we're given is less than 90 degrees. And do you remember what we needed to do? What we needed to do is show a relationship between side A and B times the sine of the other angle. So let's do that now. What is the relationship? Eight is something in reference to 10 times the sine of angle 30 degrees. 30 degrees, uh, the sine of 30 degrees is one half, therefore this can be whittled down to five. And we know that eight is greater than five, therefore A is greater than B sine A. So let's check out what that was. When A is greater than B sine A, when A is greater than B sine A, we know that this is a situation or set up for two solutions. So the answer to this one is two solutions. Let's look at the next situation. So we can have two solutions here. What about here? B is equal to eight, C is equal to 10, and B is equal to 118. Well, this is a situation where the angle given is greater than 90 degrees. And we know that in that situation, if the angle given is greater than the 90 degrees, then the side opposite must be greater than all the other angles. Let's go back up. So you remember we just talked about it? If the angle given is greater than or equal to 90 degrees, the side opposite cannot be less than any of the other sides. If we have that, then there's no solution. The side opposite must be greater than whatever other side is given. Since the side opposite B, being eight, is smaller than C, which is 10, I know in this case there is no solution, okay? I won't lie to you, I always have to refer to the um, actual chart. Maybe you're better than me and you'll be able to go, yeah, I can memorize this. So try it, guys. Try to memorize it. Try to figure it out. But I'm throughout our lesson, we're going to be referring back to that chart. Here, we're going to find the solutions for each triangle. If no solution exists, then we're going to write none. So here we have a triangle where angle A is 112 degrees and the side opposite it is 4. And angle B. And the side opposite um, angle B is three, which means that the side opposite A is the longest side. So if that's the case, that puts us in the situation, I know I'm scrolling up, to deal with this one solution, right? Remember, if the side is larger than or equal to 90 degrees, angle is rather, and the side opposite has to be the longest, then there's one solution. So since there's one solution, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my law of signs as I know to do so. So my setup is here where I'm just gonna place all the answers. I put the information I have so far into my chart or table. And over here, I'm gonna set it up as the sine of angle A over side A is equal to sine of B over side B. I like it to be solution calculator ready. So I know that that means that the sine of B is going to equal to three times the sine of 112 degrees divided by four. And if I really want to be calculator ready, I could write the inverse of all of that stuff. The inverse of all of that stuff, because I've got to take the inverse of that function, is going to give me angle B. And so I'm going to go over to a calculator and do that now. And so with some help from Desmos, I got that the measure of angle B is 44.1 degrees. And so now if that's the case, I can now find the measurement for angle C by adding these guys up and subtracting it from 180 degrees, which leaves us with approximately 29 point, uh, what is this, 29.9 degrees? 23.9 degrees, I think that's what it is.
So 23.9 degrees for angle C. And now we get the opportunity to uh, solve for side C. And so we're going to, you know, just employ sine of 23.9 over side C. Or maybe I should do it the other way. I think I will. How about C over uh, the sine of 23.9 degrees is going to equal, and I like to use what I started off with, so I'm going to, it's equal to 4 over the sine of 112 degrees. And then so with a little bit of work, we can recognize that my calculator ready situation is going to be 4 times the sine of 23.9 over the sign of 100 of 112 degrees will give me the answer that I'm looking for. And that says that C is equal to approximately 1.7 units of length. All right. So that's how we're going to work it out. First, situ first we need to situate what um, situation we're dealing with using the ambiguous case laws or notes that we have and then we're going to use our law of signs to figure out the rest of the information okay so here we have angle a which is less than uh, 90 degrees and so we need to check to see if the relationship is going to hold in the way that we want we know that the side given times the sine of that angle has to come in less than 40 in order for um, things to work out, right? Remember, A, a has to be greater than the sine of um, angle A times the opposite side, in this case, side C, in order for anything to work. So let's check that out. So um, let me use a black pen here, babies. All right, so 40 has to be greater than the sine of A, and that's gonna be the sine of 51 degrees times side C, which is 50. So let's check on that. We see that 40 is indeed greater than 38.9, and what that's giving us is the fact that this situation has two solutions. Let's go back up to the top and recall what we learned about A being greater than B times the sine of A. When that's the situation, A can be in two locations and we know we have two solutions. So let's see how we can find those two solutions. So if you look at this setup, so here is our side of 50, which is C. So this is angle C that we're looking to figure out. And here's angle C that could be here. The question is, what is angle C? So depending on what angle C is, if angle C is this guy here, whatever this is, then that's going to mean that we're dealing with this triangle. And if angle C is this one here, that means we're that means we're dealing with the larger triangle, right? Can you guys see what I'm talking about? So what's the difference between these two angles? What do I know? Let's think about it. Um, this angle is acute and this one is obtuse. This angle is acute and this one is obtuse. This angle here, the relationship between these two angles, and this might be hard to see, is that these two angles are supplementary. When, when you add them together, they will be 180. How do I know that? Well, I know that because I know that this angle here and this angle here, they have to be equal because this is an isosceles triangle. Base angles of an isosceles triangles are equivalent. Therefore, they um, these two angles that I'm now obscuring, this angle here, and this angle here that I've knocked with two notches have to be supplementary because these two are supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees, right? Okay, so with that in mind, we're going to knowingly go into the law of sines by and, and use this information. So watch. So I know that the sine of angle A, so the sine of 51 over side A is equal to the sine of angle C over side C solving this um, over side C, which we know to be 50, my bad. So solving this for um, angle C is going to give us this intermediate step, sine of 51, hold on, over 40. And then we can look at this and um, if we really wanted to make it calculator ready, put all of that into the arc sign or the inverse sign and when I go to the 
76.3 degrees now we need to kind of figure out where this situation is so the 76.3 degrees is less than 90 degrees it's an acute angle so that means 76.3 degrees goes here and if that's 76.3 then this is 76.3 and we know that this angle here the other possible angle has to be um the sign of or has to be the uh, supplement supplement of uh, 76.3 which is going to be I'm trying to do it in my head 103.7 103.7 103.7 degrees is that making sense you guys see how we did that so now let me break down our answer choices so this gets into a whole lot of things Okay, so let's check out the ramifications. The measurement of angle A was given as 51 degrees. I'm not even going to deal with the sides yet. The measurement of angle B was not given, but we were able to calculate that one possible value is that we get 63 degrees here. Notice 76.3 degrees here. No check it. So we need to consider what is happening when C is equal to 76.3. We know that's only one situation. So we get 52 Point seven. When I add it all up, we get 180 degrees, which makes sense. But then we know that A is, A is 51 degrees, but C could also be, as we saw over here, 103.7 degrees. So if that's the case, then we know when we add all of this stuff up, we're going to get 154 Point seven, which when I take 154.7 and I subtract that from 80, I'm going to get something in the line of uh, 79 minus that is going to be 5 and it's going to be a 2 here, 25.3 degrees. Does that make sense? So here are two different um, angle situations that we could have. These angles are going to provide us different side lengths. So we need to go back and do that. And these are side lengths, obviously, for um, side B. So side B, depending on how wide it's open, is going to give us different lengths. So how do I do it? I'm going to use the law of sines. So what we see here is that these are our two setups. B over the sine of 52.7 has to equal 40, which is the length of A over the um, angle A. The sine of angle A or B is equal to the sine of 25.3 over uh, side A over the sine of angle A. And so with a little bit of calculation, I will spare you guys, with a little bit of calculation, here's what we get. We get 41 length for the side B or yeah, for side B and or 22 length, depending on the measure of the angle. So how would we write that? So I'm going to put the 22 uh, length here. Let me go ahead and put it in here. I'm going to put um, I'm going to put the 41 here and I'm going to put the 22 here. And what I'm going to do is just use my highlighter to indicate that's an eraser. I'm going to use my highlighter to indicate when um, when we're dealing with what side. So B is 41 when we're dealing with this angle and when we're dealing with the other angle, 25.3, B would be 22. So you see how we get two very different triangles. All right, that was a lot, guys. Um, I feel like we did a lot of math. I hope that you can review it and it makes sense. I'm going to skip the last example, which would be a little bit more of the same um, in hopes that you can just take the time to digest this. I look forward to talking to you soon. Let's have some clarity on this whenever you want to talk. Holler at me. I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Take care. Bye bye.